Nothing worthwhile is ever easy. Nicholas Sparks. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Our genre today is going to be romance. A little bit of a disclaimer here. This is neither of our favorite genres. I read it more often than Lee does, and Lee just outright hates it. So (laughs) I think we've made that pretty clear in a lot of the episodes we have. But I do have a lot of respect for romance authors because it is something I could never do. It does take a lot of work. It takes a lot of understanding humans and emotions. Which is why I write action. (laughs) All right. So to just quickly list some of the subgenres of romance, one of the most common is a historical romance. At the time, it wasn't historical, but it is now. Pride and Prejudice, Mm -hmm. Jane Austen, you know, World War II romance, whatever. You also have erotica, contemporary, and suspense. The erotica is something I think we're going to spend a little bit more on another episode about later on, because there are questions about, can I write this scene in this story and whatever? And yes, if you're writing in the romance genre, then it's expected. Yeah. It's all about knowing your target audience. So the thing about romance is that it is one of the most widely read genres because it is so widely relatable. Yeah, a lot of your readers might not ever have cast a spell before. They might not ever have been in a gunfight, but most of them have fallen in love at some point. They've all had heartbreak and the struggle of, do I actually like this person or not? I think most of the romance targets females, and so a lot of your main characters are going to be females. But A lot of it is very escapist, from my understanding. You have a lot of these male leads that are completely out there and unrealistic with these female leads that tend to be very relatable in some way. So having somebody notice something special about your main character is a little bit of a fantasy fulfillment for your readers. A lot of romance is writing what readers wish they had in their lives. Because even though it is kind of a cliche in and of its own, there are a lot of housewives out there who enjoy romance because they feel something is lacking in their own relationship. So it is very escapist. If you understand that, that will really help you in writing romance. I think as far as authors are concerned, most of your widely read female authors are also going to be in this genre because a lot of your widely read female readers are going to be in this genre. Nora Roberts comes to mind. She is a huge name in the romance writing world. You also have on the more subtle, less erotica style romance, John Green and Nicholas Sparks. They tend to be closer to YA romance, but not always. Yeah, there's the the cliche of somebody has to have cancer in... That's Nicholas Sparks, right? That's Nicholas Sparks. (laughs) Shows how much I know. And then, of course, you also have authors like E.L. James, which is very much in the, I would say, soft porn category. And that was Fifty Shades of Grey, right? Yes. So settings for romance are mostly modern, mostly urban earth kind of situations. You may have an urban fantasy. One author comes to mind is Christine Feehan. But it's mostly going to be our world today as it is. And that goes back to accessing the escapist part of romance storytelling. But as we mentioned, there's also some historical ones in there. You'll have a lot of people writing to feel like Jane Austen or in that time period or in war times. So you can have like your nurse caregiver kind of stories. When it comes to writing romance... You have to have a emotional connection. Your writing is going to be emotional and very sensual. You're going to not have a lot of sight images, but touch and smell is going to be a huge part of that. Taste. Yeah. One that I'm reading right now, because I need to read more romance if I'm going to be doing a podcast that involves romance. (laughs) One of us needs to. Somebody needs to. She's biting the bullet for me. But a lot of the physical descriptions have another element to them, so they'll connect with something more like taste. So his eyes are often described as like melting chocolate. 
you're also going to have a lot of first person stories. Most romance is written in first person so that the reader feels like they are the main character. They're the ones being romanced. So having that first person is a fast way to get your reader feeling like they're part of the character. And the last bit of writing style when it comes to romance is the sentence structure. You're going to have some shorter sentences, but they are packed with emotion. And it will change based on what's happening in the story. So if you have a more sensual moment, the writing style will become a little bit longer, a little bit more deep in what is said and how it's said. Like the book that I'm reading right now is a suspense romance. So the action parts are quicker and faster. And I think romance goes hand in hand really well with suspense because they fall into a lot of similar categories outside of the plot content. A lot of the time it's modern day. A lot of the time you've got that shorter sentence structure. And your word count also ends up in pretty much the same range. So for romance, you end up with between 70 and 100,000 words, which is very similar to your thriller suspense. Something else about the writing style of romance is you're going to have more character-based stories than plot-based stories. Your plot is generally going to fall a little flat unless you have a really good background. That's the difference between a fantasy with a romance subplot and a romance with a fantasy subplot. Let's move on to the titling of a romance novel. Just like the YA, you tend to have a little bit more ethereal type philosophical phrases as your titles, or just kind of nonsense titles, like Fifty Shades of Grey. There is probably some relevance in the story about Fifty Shades of Grey. I think the character's last name is Grey, but it's the whimsical kind of reference to it. It doesn't tell me anything about the book whatsoever. Pretty much. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, and mostly I see this with historical romance, is the blatant, obvious, here's the story and exactly what it's about. You end up with something like the time traveler's wife. And you often have the character's profession and maybe some sort of adjective attached to that. Apostrophe S, event thing that happens in the story. Covers for romance novels tend to be light in color. So your whites, tans, reds, pinks, purples. More tan. (laughs) Your fonts are going to be very loopy scripts. If it's a romance suspense, it's going to lean more toward the sans serif and it's going to be a little bolder. And then you're going to have a lot of photography on your covers. And it's going to be people with their heads cut off. Not actually cut off, just not in the frame. (laughs) So the less of a person's head you see, the more rated R the story is. The cover will help define just how erotic the romance novel is. So I bet there aren't any tropes when it comes to romance novels. Oh, absolutely none. It's not like we talked about two of them last month. (laughs) Of course, our love triangles are one of them. Having the boyfriend back in the city world and the new romance back in our hometown. And then she's torn between the two because she wants both. You're also going to have a lot of the vengeful ex- Whether it's the female lead's ex coming back and trying to destroy her new relationship or the love interest's ex trying to hold on to what used to be. Another trope is the secret billionaire. The love interest is trying their hardest to hide the fact that they're super rich. Yeah. Why? Because they don't want somebody who's after me for my money. I want somebody who's after me for me. Uh, Okay. (laughs) This next one I can kind of get behind, and this is enemies to lovers. Because a lot of the same hormones go on in the body when it comes to hating somebody versus loving somebody. The body tends to react in very similar ways. And then, of course, you can't have a good romance without a forbidden love. Whether it's, I can't love you because I'm already in a relationship with someone else, Or, I can't love you because X, Y, Z. Very classical Romeo and Juliet. This is a very old trope. It's old because it works. So, in romance, there are a gajillion tropes. 
And if you really want to be a successful romance author, use them all in one book. (laughs) Romance readers love predictability in pieces. Why do you think people are constantly watching Hallmark? Even though we know exactly how it's going to end, we care more about the character's development and progress toward that known end than anything else. Yeah, it's the journey, not the destination. It's not like you pick up a romance book and then your two characters are introduced. Well, I wonder if they're going to end up together. You know that going into the book. So to any of you authors out there who write romance, hats off to you. Yes. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication. But it does take knowing people and emotions and being able to describe those emotions, which is probably the hardest thing in the world. And remember, like our opener said, nothing worthwhile is ever easy, but it will be worth it to write this book because it's important to you. And if you are enjoying it, if you're just fantasy fulfillment, I wish the guy I fell in love with was a secret billionaire. Great. Write your story. Write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 